Hey guys, um, this is. I'm trying to make this message short because it's going to kind of be a continuing message, but it goes along with the lines of this storm that's coming, eight eleven to nine eleven. But it's already starting, guys. It's with, with this virus garbage. Um, it's pre yes, it's serious. I get it to a point. Carried it overboard a little bit. Maybe I'll put a different message out about that, but there's a real storm coming, guys. This may be it. I don't think so. Probably a prelude to it. A messy, ugly. I don't know what's going to happen out of all this sheer fear and stupidity, but, and I'm not, you know, look at my other ones. I'm not mocking any of the people that are having that have this virus that are really sick and then I'm not liking any of the people that died because that's some serious stuff guys I get it but the hospitals are full of death too of people dying in nursing homes and you know like us you know just put it into context but anyhow my message is about an idol the idols that's what's coming down that's where that's where this all is going guys it's not a it's not in the punishment stage you're not trying to punish his people and not even his wrath it's his redirection. Wake up calls, guys. Zechariah 3, you know, to, you know, the, the devil himself was tormenting Joshua. And the Lord had to rebuke him. Job, you know, all, look all down through the Bible, you know, Paul, counted all his dumb. But what I'm saying, guys, about these idols, this one is. The idol of the megamania. We're so full of it, God. We're so full of ourselves and just this mega stuff, mega mania, and these mega churches, mega, mega crazy, bigger, better, larger than life. People trying to portray themselves as something they're not. Guys, Jesus, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost and His Word are awesome. Jesus living inside of me is awesome. King of Kings. But you know what? Go read Matthew 20. We're all the same, guys. I don't care if you're the homeless guy or the doorkeeper in the church or you supposedly got a million people in your church following you. I've heard just as good a message from the homeless people sitting in the front and before church than I heard coming from the pulpit. Go figure that one. But... This mega mania, guys. Go to any restaurant, fast food, mega French fries, three servings, and all greasy, not good for you, horrible stuff. And people eat it and they eat the whole thing. It's a three, you know. Go to a restaurant. It's man, you get a super sized plate. Two people can't even eat it, but yet one person sits there and eat it. No wonder we're all obese and sick. So it's all this mega mania, but this mega mania that has been going on in the in the church, supposed church. Guys, this, I had this message a long time ago, and I'm about to really get into it. But God flipped the switch. Because where did you go to church today? Most of you, you didn't. Buildings are closing. A lot of them aren't going to survive, guys. It's not, that's not my, my point, or that's not where I'm going. What I'm saying is, when you listen to the rest of this message, you'll, you'll hear it, but he told me a while back that it's going to be an outpouring. He said, take the revival out of it, take the movement out of it. It's going to be an outpouring, like in Joel, Joel's army, so that no man gets the glory. Most of them are designed for their, for their own glory. It's the GMO gospel that they're preaching. A lot of them, give me all your glory, all your money, all your obedience, and your, what you say doesn't matter. Less than mentality. I'm 30,000, 60,000, 90,000 feet, and you're pond scum. I'm so close to God, and you're so far away from him. If you're living in sin, of course you are. We all were there at one time. If you got saved, but did you truly get saved? You know, guys, it's just, I'm going to 
this is in the soapbox. I'm not making this up. This is what the Lord, the one thing the Lord told me, but I'm going to tell you two things that he showed me in this. The first one, I don't want to get sidetracked on this because I just, what I just said, the better than mentality. He took me to something natural. You got to hear both pieces, both of these guys. Just keep tuned in, please. Sorry for the animation and the hand gestures. My wife can tell me about that. <clears throat> I'm working on it. The, uh, this is natural, okay? We think we're this, which we are fairly powerful. I mean, we're fairly powerful military wise, yeah, kind of, sort of, but, you know, but, I mean, would we want a war with Russia or China? Probably not. We're not as strong as we act. Go to Korea. They tried it back in Korea, and, you know, look at Korea now. But, anyhow, that's all another story. But, what do we do? Send in the aircraft carrier. Where's the power? The glory, you know. Oh, look at us, you know. We're going to bomb you if you don't agree with us type attitude, you know. The big aircraft carrier. And then, yeah, they're pretty powerful ships. They've got a lot of stuff to support them and a lot of planes and stuff. This is an old movie, guys. Everybody, same thing with King David, but everybody wants the Tom Cruise moment. They want to be the top gun. They want to fly that fighter plane, blow things up. They want to be the highlighted greatest and latest rock star, play guitar, drums, album, whatever, preacher, minister, just the GMO gospel, guys. It's all about them and not about Jesus, not about the God, Holy Ghost, Jesus, and his word. You can see it pretty plainly. So the, the aircraft carrier, powerful, you know, and this was in the natural. And then the admirals usually on the ship, a lot of them, you know, or, you know, at least a captain for sure. Somebody in, with some great authority. But then he took me to the bottom of the ship, guys, in the bowels of the ship. I don't know how many are, because I'm not, you know, somebody with, that's in fact correcting business can correct us. I just know what he showed me. There's a shaft that comes through the bottom of that ship that that propeller is driven by. And the propellers are huge, guys, because I've seen, not the aircraft carrier propellers, but I've seen them on barges on the Mississippi River. They're pretty big. Those are pretty big because I can't imagine how big an aircraft carrier propeller is. And they drive, they go 30 knots or whatever. That's, you know, 30, that's four, oh, close to 40 miles an hour. That's pretty fast for a big ship. And it has to keep moving. And if it's in a war zone, can you imagine if that thing stopped? They had a problem. Okay, that shaft is spinning. I don't know how many thousands or how, how fast it's going. A lot. A lot of revolutions per minute. Well, it's got a seal. And it has to stay. It's probably not grease. It's probably something else. Because, I'm, like I said, I'm not. I'm just, but it's. I'm going to just use grease as an example. Somebody has to keep it greased. It's sealed so that it can keep out the seawater, so that that shaft doesn't heat up, so that it doesn't fail, so that it doesn't, you know, could even maybe cause the ship to sink or, or to be lame or to, you know, to flood or whatever. You know, it could cause it to stop. That ship to be stopped dead in the water it could cause some problems. It can't fail. Just a handful of guys taking care of it, probably 24 7. Some grease monkey, young kids, maybe even one guy in charge. Nobody sees them. They're just as important as a fighter pilot, guys. And that's what we lost sight of. The importance of one soul. David Sellers, that's why I repost him. Yeah, he's, a, you know, I don't care. He can kind of even maybe, some people might even think he's a little brass or whatever, but I repost him because look at his last post that I put on there. He's out street ministering at Walmart, he's talking about, and he posted a young kid, young, and I don't know if it was a young kid, it was, but he posted somebody that just got saved, gave their life to Christ, the importance of that one soul. <clears throat> There's another guy, Gabriel Nichols, awesome young man. I don't know what kind of a minister he really is, but he's doing a great job of where he's at. 
Aaron Buttrick, another guy that I repost. Am I going to agree with them on everything? Probably not. They're not going to probably agree with me on everything either. That's not the point. And you may not either. The point is, this is his body. Okay, then this is what he told me, guys, about the GMO gospel. Before he told me the GMO gospel, he told me one day I was in prayer and he said, and I said this, and I actually sent it to the president and the, to the vice president too. So I don't care. And I also sent it to the clerk at one of the fast food places. So I don't care. I just do, I'm, I'm obedient to the Lord. But the, um, he said, he spoke to me and he said, and so I got this almost a year ago. He said, it's time for people in the ministry to get over themselves. Man, God, I'm ministering every Sunday night for three years in a homeless shelter. Big homeless shelter houses 400 people and, you know, get a pretty decent crowd sometimes. I'm done to get, you know, small. It's not the crowd size, but there's, there's a lot of people that we minister to down there that hurt. Then he said, "Go to which is one of my favorite scriptures." We said, "Go to Second Chronicles seven fourteen two four two Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, you know the scripture." He said, "Imagine that if they'd humble themselves. Imagine that if they'd really pray. Not this theology, but the real neology, guys, where no one might even see you." But you, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word, a lot of tears, not crying, weeping before the porch and the altar, really getting a hold of God. Not this canned version of it. Sensational, Shazam, GMO gospel, so you can get the glory, and so you can get more people, and so that you can fill up a bigger building. It's like you, 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 it's your show. Where's your show today, guys? How many churches were open today, guys? I didn't do it. God allowed it to happen. I didn't flip the switch. Nothing to do with me. And it had nothing to do with you. And this mega mania garbage. So, and then, you know, so it's like, man, guys, it is time to get real with God. Quit trying to be something important. The last, I'm going to end with this because every, this, everybody wants to, to to be. Everybody wants a David moment. David Goliath, a cool story. They want to slay the giant, five smooth stones, bust his head wide open, run up there, cut his head off with his own sword, and then run through the run through the land with a bloody head. Looky, 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 looky what I did. Looky, 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 look at me. Look at how great I am. I kick kick the gate of hell's doors open and bust the devil right in his chops. He wants to be the servant. Read it. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but took on the form of a bond servant, even unto death. Dying on the cross, guys. God himself, Jesus, manifested in the flesh. Would you stay there if you had that much power and authority? Probably not. We'd be hollering, do you know who I am? Guys, it's time to get over yourself. And I'm going to end with this, okay, guys? Because this is the, uh, kind of the opposite, a little bit of the me of the mega mania, but not really. Because this is where a lot of it comes from. It comes from the pride. Read James 3 all the way to 16, but then read 17. 17 is awesome about the wisdom from above, but 316 is all about the, the demonic wisdom and the spirit of pride and all the, when there's witchcraft and all, and man, it's a, not, not good news if you're not serving him and you're involved in all this me, me, me. I'm gonna end with this, guys. What do people do on Facebook? They take a picture of their food at Denny's or wherever they go. Who cares? But a meal. It, it, who started this selfie mess? Selfie, selfie, selfie. Me, 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 me. That's why they do this mega church. That's why they're successful. 
It's like the lottery, the mega, lo mega lottery. I got a big jet, $65 million jet. You can have one too. All you have to do is give a hundred dollars and you get back a thousand, give a hundred thousand, you get back a million. God's not an eight, your personal ATM. It's the last thing I'm gonna end with. He said, he told me, he said, quit calling money a blessing, it might be a curse. I'm not saying you're cursed because you have money. I'm saying the love of the money is the root of all evil. Where's your heart at, guys? Are you really helping people? Are you really after people to get them saved and follow the Holy Ghost and into the kingdom? Or are you just after their stuff? Are you feeding the sheep or are you bleeding the sheep? I'm sorry, guys. This, I didn't end it. The start of the end, God did. The Holy Ghost did. Jesus did. His Word did. Get over yourselves. Be about your Father's business. There's no great, there's no great and small. There's no I'm up here and you're down there. Not anymore, guys. This mega, you know, America, with mega, 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 mega mania, mega millions, mega this, mega that. You know, I'm bigger than you. I got more nuclear bombs than you, blah, blah, blah. You know, the list could go on and on, guys. It's, it's an idol. God's sick of it. He told me, I think I said this at the beginning, but that we have more idols in this country, or as many, as India. Man, that's kind of shocking, guys, to me. But anyhow, so it's time to get rid of these idols because there's a storm coming, guys. But he also told me, I'm going to end with this, about this storm. I'm going to highlight more on this storm. Um, May 1st is really by when I'm gonna really, really, really be back on YouTube a lot and then Facebook and Instagram. Right now, I've kinda of got my hands full of something else the Lord has me doing, and it's taking up a lot of time. And I'm pretty wiped out and exhausted. So I haven't been able to, you know, but I know it's God. I'm gonna have a hundred testimonies in it. It's some awesome things he's already done. And so it's like, I told my wife, I said, yeah, we could do things a little differently or make some things happen. But that would be in our availability. I mean, in our ability. I'm not getting off the wheel. He's molding me, guys, and he's shaping me, and he's teaching me things. I'm not moving. I'm going to just, okay, God, what's next? Okay, God, what's next? Okay, God, what's the next step? Okay, God. So I've had to pull back a little bit. Not that I wanted to. I got bunches of books to write. I've got one to recreate. Long story. And that's what I want to do. Go rent a cabin in Minnesota because that's where I grew up and some cool cabin and off in the woods somewhere and hole up. While well, everybody's already holing up. And write these books. And listen to God. But it ain't happening because I'm on the wheel. So it's like, okay, God, right now. So but that's what I want to do. But so it's, it's, it's time to do what God wants to do, what Jesus wants to do, what the Holy Ghost wants to do, what His Word wants to do with you. So it's like, okay, I'm just, I'm going to just be obedient. So we love you guys. Um, and I'm about to do one more video. Um, this one's going to be on the idol of convenience. The next one. So tune in, uh, look at my other videos, share them with other people. We love you guys. We really do love you guys. <clears throat> Watch my other videos. You really see my heart. Don't just tune into one and tune out. I think, you know. So anyhow, um, love you guys. I <clears throat> love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.